CPUs are the heart of computers, and without one, your system wouldn't even power on. And since CPUs are so important, it's imperative that you try to find the most power without breaking the bank. i7-8700Ks and i9-9900Ks are nice and all, but what if you don't have $400 to spend? What if you're just looking for power on the cheap? Well, luckily for you and me, there's plenty of options. Okay, so just a forewarning, we will only be discussing CPUs in this video. So with that out of the way, let's get into it. So the first step you can take towards finding a good CPU for the price is broadening your search. Now by that I mean not looking specifically for new parts. Looking on eBay is a great place to find used parts for less money. So a great CPU to start with is the i5-2500K, a quad-core unlocked CPU with 6 megabytes of cache. On eBay, this CPU can be found for anywhere between $30 to $50, which, don't get me wrong, isn't incredibly cheap, but for the performance that you get from a chip made in 2010, it's incredible. Motherboards for this chip are also pretty cheap as well, with the LGA1155 socket pretty much being all but dead at this point. So moving on from the 2500K, another great budget CPU is the i5-750. Now this is also a quad-core CPU and has an unlocked core multiplier, but the ultimate downside to this CPU is just its age. Releasing in July of 2009, this CPU can be found for about $25, but despite the fact that this CPU is almost 10 years old, it still packs a punch. Being on the 1156 socket, this i5 is also pretty cheap to buy into, and on top of that, DDR3 RAM is starting to become incredibly cheap. So if you're looking to start a budget system, the i5-750 is definitely a great place to start. But what if you don't want an i5, and instead you're looking for something with a little more juice? Well then the i7-920 has you covered. This CPU is a quad-core, 8-threaded beast released in November of 2008. Now, the CPU is a little over 10 years old, so if you're looking for something a little more modern, then this might not be the CPU you're looking for, but despite that, it still packs quite a potent punch. Now, the CPU can be found on eBay for between $10 to $30, so if price is your ultimate concern, then this might be worth considering. But if you're willing to spend a bit more, going with the newer i5-2500K honestly might be a better choice. But what if 4 cores just isn't enough? Well, if that's the case, then the 6-core 12-thread i7-980 might be a good choice for you. Rocking a price tag of $150, this chip is not cheap by any means, but it's certainly less expensive than the modern i7-8700K. So another decent 6-core CPU worth considering is the FX6300. Costing about $20 on eBay, this CPU isn't great, and I've actually used it before for about 2 years, and I mean, it's an alright CPU, but it performs about on par with the Pentium G4560 while consuming a whole lot more power. But I mean, $20 for a CPU on an already inexpensive platform you really can't go wrong with. Sticking to the FX line, the FX8350 is also a decent CPU for the money. This 8-core CPU performs about on par with an older i5, which definitely isn't bad, and the 8-cores will definitely help out if you're using the CPU in a media production rig. And for $60, you can't really go wrong. Now, this CPU shares the same AM3 Plus platform as the FX6300, and motherboards for these CPUs range from about $40 to $60, which isn't really that expensive, and for these prices, these CPUs are still pretty usable. So buying used is nice and all, but what if you're like me and would prefer to buy things new? Then there's plenty of options too. The first CPU that may jump to mind is the recently released Athlon 200GE. This dual-core 4-thread CPU released only a few months ago, and for $55, it's an excellent performer. Not only do you get Intel Pentium G4560 performance, you also are getting the excellent AM4 socket upgrade path. Meaning, if you're looking for something with a little more juice down the road, then upgrading to a Ryzen wouldn't require you to spend any additional money on motherboards or RAM. So sticking to Ryzen, another great budget CPU has to be the Ryzen 3 1200 and 2200G. For just under $100, both of these quad-core CPUs offer excellent performance at a modest price. The Ryzen 3 2200G also has a pretty decent onboard graphics solution as well. Now, you wouldn't be maxing out Battlefield 5 on this APU, but for $100, you're able to play these games at console-esque settings at 720 to 90 p If you're looking to save money on a GPU, the Ryzen 3 2200G is definitely worth considering. But if you're looking for just a CPU that packs an incredible punch for its price, then look no further than the Pentium G4560. This CPU has two cores and four threads, and ultimately performs nearly identically to older 6th and 7th gen core i3s. And for about $70, this CPU was hard to beat if you're on a tight budget. And on top of that, if you want an upgrade path to 7th generation i5s and i7s, then this CPU is definitely one of the best values available. So ultimately, you can find great CPUs at a great price. Admittedly, most of them are older pieces of tech and are used, 
but even so, you can actually save quite a bit of money. If you're looking for lots of power at a low price, then older i5s are a great place to start. New Ryzen's also offer power at an excellent price, more specifically the Ryzen 5s. Not only do most of them come equipped with 6 cores and SMT, they can also be found for under $180, which is a steal when considering their excellent performance. So, in conclusion, great CPUs can be found at great prices. It may take a bit of research and take a bit of time to find, but they definitely are out there. Older CPUs are a great place to start a search, and modern sub-$100 CPUs from both Intel and AMD offer exceptional levels of performance. It all really comes down to what you're comfortable with and what you're looking for. So thank you for watching, and if you enjoy, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and click the bell icon so you'll be notified about all our future uploads. And also tell us, what CPU are you currently rocking, and did you buy it used or new? We can't wait to see what you guys have to say, and I'm personally curious to see what your guys' rigs have in them. It's always something that I've just been kind of curious about. So thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.